Hi, I'm Mark, and today we're going to build a geodesic dome. So first, let's go through the tools that we need to use. You're going to be using vice grips, a drill gun, or you can use a ratchet. Uh, we're going to be using quarter inch bolts that are two inches long with a set of washers and a nut. Uh, drill gun really makes this go a lot easier. Now some of the other things we have on this table are clips for the greenhouse plastic to hold it on. And we have paint and we'll get into the paint here pretty quick. What we've got is struts. Geodesic domes are made from struts. So this is a strut. As you'll see, it's got angles on both ends like that and holes right here. A couple of tips. When you're drilling your holes, this is a quarter inch bolt. You want it to go in nice and loose. It makes it a lot easier. It's very forgiving when you're doing the process. So drill your hole about a third the size of the, or bigger than the bolt. Now, when it comes to struts, there's a couple of things that matter here. The length, the angle that's bent on it right here, and the coating that's on it. So what, we've, what we're using is we're using inch or a half inch uh, steel electrical conduit. Now, as far as price comparison goes, this is actually cheaper than PVC. And you don't want to use PVC for a couple of, number, a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason is it degrades in the sun. So the longevity of your structure will be greatly decreased over time. They'll probably only last three to five years. PVC becomes brittle in the sun. And PVC interacts with plastic. So the plastic sheeting that you put on will get eaten by the PVC over time. Now there are ways around that. You can tape the PVC. But metal conduit is absolutely the way to go. This one will be standing 20, 30, 40 years from now. Now, we painted these. That's, there's two reasons we painted these. First, it's a color code system so that you can put it together. Second, it keeps the pipe from rusting, gives it a lot of longevity. These aren't going to get a lot of exposure or, or traffic on them, so the paint will last a long time. So, we used a jig to bend our parts, and we'll go into that in greater detail. But we have yellow, black, green, red, blue, and purple. This is a 4V dome, and a 4V dome uh, is very, very strong. The more joints you have in a geodesic dome, dome the stronger the dome will be. So this one, we're going to be building a 19 uh, foot diameter dome today that ends up being about 260, 280 square feet of space. The uh, dome itself, the great thing about the design is with geodesic is if you want to increase the space, it doesn't increase the number of parts. Uh, it, all it does is increase the length of the parts and, the, and you end up with different angles on them. So this is a 255 piece system, this one here. Um, if you built it in at 30 foot across or 40 foot across or 60 foot across, it would still be 255 pieces. Let's get building. So the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously have your parts in nice stacks so that you can keep everything organized. The second thing you're going to need is a little bit of space. Wide open. doesn't have to be flat. Domes will rest on angled ground just fine. But uh, the flatter the better. It's easier for working. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay out our pattern. Um, this is a very important step. Uh, if, as you're following the picture guide, uh, you're going to build the pattern on the ground flat. And we're going to build this from the top down as opposed from the bottom up. Uh, the reason is this gets a little heavy and we don't want to be doing a lot of work on ladders. Uh, it's still light enough that two or three people can pick it up and carry it around, but uh, we don't want to be doing a bunch of ladder work today. Ladders are dangerous. So first thing is our 5V.
This is going to get real big. Where am I? Right there. All right, we have about half of the dome laid out right now. And as you build, you're, you're gonna start going up. And if we continue to lay the parts out, they get further and further away, but the dome pulls closer and closer in. So we don't wanna get too far ahead of ourselves. We're at 1V, 2V, 3V, 4V. And that's probably a little far out. We probably could have stopped at three, but here we go. All right, quarter inch, two inch long bolt with a washer goes through the top. Uh, one of the things that we try to do as we're building out is the parts that come down, we try to make them the top ones and the parts that go down out of the bottom, the bottom ones. So all we're doing, sliding that through Another washer, and then a nut at the bottom. And again, just get it hand tight to start with. You don't want to tighten it down because all of this has to flex. Okay. And on to the next one. You just keep repeating the process over and over again. All right, a note about your hardware. It's important to use the right stuff. So. People will say, well, a quarter inch bolt isn't that strong. Well, the reality is, is a quarter inch bolt in this situation is extremely strong. But what you need is washers. You've got to have washers on both ends of this. And the reason why is as you have wind shear or, or any force pull, put on this, you don't want to pull the bolt head through. So the washer gives it a nice platform, which can bite into, and it won't pull through the, the metal. All right, so as we're building, you have a couple of sharp edges on the metal here. Uh, depending on your process, you could go really in depth and round off the corners and sand everything. But for speed, you know, you're just going to cut it off and crush it down. So as you go up, what you don't want to do is cut your plastic. So you can see we've already taped some joints here. All we're doing is we're coming along with a little bit of duct tape. Just like that. Making it so it's a smooth surface so it's not gonna cut our plastic later. All right, so now it's time to install a door. Well, there's two different ways to do this. The way that we're gonna do this here is kind of a slanted door. We're gonna remove this, 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 and this. So the door will be this shape right here. So you hinge to this side and these parts move out and close back. Okay, so right now what I'm doing is taking the parts that we removed and I'm bolting them together to form the framework for a door. Now you need to use a shorter bolt because we're not traveling through so many joints. So it's gonna end up being three quarter inch bolt. Couple of washers. Okay, so we're gonna go down right there and we're gonna bend this angle here and that angle will match. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. All right. 
And that'll be the hinge. All right, so here's the door. What we've done is we've removed this bar here, this bar here, this bar here, and this bar here coming across like that, giving us an open space. Then I took those materials and I fashioned a, a square out of it. And this piece here, I bent with my knee to match the angle of the dome coming across right here. So it's rounded. Then we just bolted it together with three quarter inch long quarter inch bolts. And then we've got a clip here that we just fastened on and the door opens like that. So you walk up, step in, door closes behind you. Now you can add a couple of more clips obviously and if you want to run more material off of this you're just bolting it on. So you can actually, the great thing about this material is you just watched me bend it with my knee. We can just take a pair of uh, vice grips and clamp this down flat and then you can screw in more parts if you want. So you're just drilling a couple more holes and adding more pieces in. Otherwise, it's just a simple door. All right, if you don't have a clip, then do-it-yourselfers should have a few tools in their toolbox. Uh, duct tape and zip ties are two of the best fasteners there are out there. So you're gonna add a couple of zip ties. Well, it depends on how thick your zip ties are. These are pretty thin, right? So we're gonna crank that down just like that. We're gonna add a couple on here. And these are a quick and easy hinge. Now, if you have a thicker zip tie, one that's maybe half inch thick, you can actually drill a little hole in the center and screw through to it. So you could screw your part to each one so it doesn't slip in any direction. But here we go. There's the door. All right, so now that we've got the dome built, a door added on, it's time to add our sheeting on. But first we have to go around and make sure that all of the joints at the bottom or through the whole thing are tightened. And then all of the joints have the tape on them so that they don't tear the plastic. What you're gonna see next is we're gonna take a roll of plastic, we're gonna unroll it and pull it over the dome. And we're gonna cut it off, extend it and secure it on. So what we have here is six mil clear construction plastic. Okay, this is $77 a roll for it's 20 foot wide by 100 foot long. It's 2,000 square feet. That's about three times as much as we need to cover this dome. This plastic, because it's not UV resistant, will only last a year to two years in the sun before it becomes too brittle and tears. Uh, for the purpose of this dome, a year to two years is perfect for what we need. If you want to go with greenhouse plastic for about $130 you can cover this dome with greenhouse plastic. Uh, you're going to order a piece that uh, will be defined in the instructions, but this piece uh, is going to be square, so you're going to have folds in it, and we're going to show you how to do that. There's multiple different types of plastic that you could cover this with. UV resistant plastic will last you between four and five years depending on your solar exposure. Uh, white plastic is called overwintering plastic. It lasts about four years also, and clear plastic like this, doesn't look very clear, uh, is, uh, it's about $77 for 2,000 square feet, and it'll do just fine. If you have to reapply it every couple of years, no big deal. So now we're gonna clip the plastic on. To do that, we're gonna use these great little plumbing clips. Uh, they're three quarter inch, which gives room for plastic to be wrapped around, and then they just slide on and clip in place. So what we're gonna do is at this perimeter edge, 
we're going to pull the plastic up underneath and then slide the clip on from underneath like this. Now this plastic might not be in the perfect position. I'm just going to show you how it's done. So the clip goes like that and then pins down to the ground and holds the plastic in place. Very simple. Since we're working with 20 foot wide by 100 foot long material, it's six mil clear construction plastic. It's not gonna cover the dome completely in one swipe. As you can see, there's this big gap on here, on this side, and a little gap on the other side. So what we're gonna do is we're going to tuck the new material up underneath this so that it's weather resistant and we'll tape those closed. But what we've got here, we wanna go up underneath and come down to the ground and that is seven foot. But we wanna have an extra foot to wrap under. So we're gonna go nine foot, just give it a little extra. And since we're 20 foot wide, this section from here to there is 15 foot. So we'll have overlap going inside on both sides. We'll do a smaller piece for the other side. And then uh, we'll throw some tape on here and a couple of ropes and we're good. All right, so here's our 20 foot by nine foot piece of plastic. Here's our corners. So what we're gonna do to secure this in, so we're gonna fold these over and we'll tape these edges like this. Uh, it's, and then you'll see here, we'll have this. You could also use clips here like that. And that'll hold it in place. All right, so now we're gonna cut the door frame. What we've got is, this whole section right here is the door frame right there. Okay, so we're not gonna cut here, but we're gonna cut along the bottom edge up and right here so that this turns into a flap. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a whole nother piece of plastic to the outside of it so that it overhangs about a foot so that water will not travel in. Um, now, what you're seeing is we have two pieces of plastic here. So Here's the inside piece of plastic that we tucked in, and right there is the rim of the old plastic. So we're not gonna cut into the old plastic. We're just gonna cut into, we're not gonna cut into the top layer. We're gonna cut into the underneath shingle layer. So we're gonna start right here. And it doesn't matter if it's jagged or a little misshapen because you're going to you're going to add a whole nother layer to this. Okay. Now, we'll tape this part on here to the door and we'll add a whole nother sheet to the outside of this to make an overhang for protection for rain. Okay, so I'm going to tape this plastic to this frame here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my tape around the pole first so that it has a good strong hold. And I'm gonna pull my plastic into place, make sure it's fitting right. Tuck it up in there, and tape over it. Now you're gonna repeat this several times on the frame holding it down. And this is the exact same process that you would be using if you were taping to a pole, you would wrap the tape around the pole and then attach it to the plastic. Wow, Mark, it looks great. Thanks so much for showing us how to build this geodesic dome today. You're welcome, it was a lot of fun. We have the plans for this and instructions on our site, diyready.com, as well as lots of other really cool things you can make. Please visit us there.